Ugh, something smells funny in here. Is something... there? Hi there, sweetie. You've been a bad girl, Sophie. Why do you want to make your father cry? Perhaps you wish to see your mother again. Where's Helena? Sophie, are you mad at me? It's been so long since our last meeting. What are you talking about? Don't you remember? We've met time after time. In every bad dream you had as a child. I'll take you to the world inside the closet. But first, we need to play some more. Why don't you look after my pets? They're a bit hungry, but they're lively pups. Have fun. Take your time. Um, cute little doggies. I'm busy right now, so why don't we play later? <coughs> no! Stay away from me, you stupid dogs! Papa. Sophie! Sophie, Sophie, please. Sophie, get up. Sophie. Sophie. This can't be real, right? Let's go see Richard. We can't just leave her here. Thank you for finding my daughter. Tell me where you're going. I'll kill him. He, he killed my daughter. Wait. Just let me go! Keith, you're a detective. You've seen parents whose children were killed, haven't you? And haven't they said the same, that they want to kill the one who killed their children? Revenge is my duty as her father! David, bring me a curtain and a towel. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Richard. Lance, checking on him from time to time. Why'd you tie him up? I checked, and there's no razors or scissors, but there are mirrors and windows. Make sure they don't get broken. And don't take out the gag. He might chew off his tongue. Isn't there any other way? Tell me if you've got a better idea. Piece of shit. Where are you going? I'm just going to stay by the guy's side. You not gonna allow that, either? David, you stay here. I don't want you jabbing me in the back, too. I wouldn't do that. 
I know you didn't want to do it this way. I feel so bad for Richard, but there's not much else we can do. What can you even do? I'm coming too. We have to find Helena, and quick. Do as you like. David! Why don't you do what I tell you to? Haven't I told you not to play in here? What if a pot or a knife fell on you? Sorry, Dad. So, why were you playing around here? Um, I was playing policeman. And, um, it's snowing today. So? This material is white and fluffy, like snow. So... Do you want to join the police, Todd? Yeah, I want to be a policeman like you, Dad. <laughs> well, well. But a policeman has to follow the rules. A boy who breaks rules can't join the force. It's the law. Well, unless you have connections, right? Connections? Who taught you a word like that? You did, Dad. Well then, you'll join the force with your connections. That's a lame way to do it. Lame? Yeah, some of my buddies got in by connections, but they're all dumb, unpopular, and really lame to boot. You want to be a lame policeman, Todd? No, uh I'll be a cool policeman. And no relying on connections, or playing pretend in the kitchen. Mom should be back from shopping soon. Let's go meet her. Okay, don't want Mom to run into any swindlers. Dad and I'll protect her. Swindlers? Now who taught you that one? You did that. Right. Well, let's go. Are we taking the car? I've got a better idea. Oh! Oops, sorry. Keith? What's the matter? Just thinking about my son. You... have a son? He's dead. David, let me ask a favor. My neck's gonna break. Hey, quit shaking. Don't you work out at all? Why are you trying to get up there anyway? That big-headed freak. He's always vanishing when there's no way out, and appearing from nowhere, too. He's clearly using routes we don't know about. I need to learn more about them. This wall's been painted over, so I'm sure there's a path up ahead. That doesn't explain using me as a footstool. Climb up there and get your weight off my shoulders. Lance could have worked, but I wouldn't push a wounded guy. And for your information, only 3% of that weight is fat. So excuse you. <coughs> Toss me your lighter. I'll look ahead. Don't move from that spot. Shout for me if anything happens. Dick? Ah! 
Don't move. You're under arrest. <laughs> Your wifey's got a good butt on her. Really makes me want to chase after her. Where is she? Where? Ah, uh, detective. <sighs> How careless. Trying to take me on in such close quarters. I hate to say such a rude thing to a detective, but not really. Dummy. Keith, my poor darling. You watched me as I wallowed in the depths of despair. And there you stood with your back against the edge. Now it's time that you finally learn. You need pride. You need peace. So go ahead. Take it all. But don't you see? In the end, there will be nothing left of you. Uh, where is this? Who are you? What's going on? Hello, Miss Baring. Who? Call me Boogie, ma'am. I'm about to begin a game befitting such a joyful night. I'd appreciate your participation as well. Run from me, miss. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean. Where's my husband? Where am I? Why is that man tied up? Ah, he's an assistant. He can quickly explain to you how this will all work. If I should catch you... This happens. <laughs> Understand the rules now? Where's my husband? Somewhere you wouldn't know about. Where's my husband? He can't save you. He's in my grasp. It's up to me if he lives or dies. Now run, Miss Bayring. The game begins, and I am it. So, I was on the inside of the cell?
Thanks for the letter. Keith, did something happen? That big head knocked me out cold. What? No wonder you took so long. Are you okay? I could have died easily, but more importantly... No, forget it. There was another corpse. I think one of the servants. Been dead a few months. A few months? Isn't that kind of odd? Yeah, it is. It's not like he got stuck there and couldn't get out. He was clearly murdered with a knife. What a ridiculous place. I never wanted to come somewhere so shady. What about it is shady? Since when are there castles in this country? I thought something was up the moment my boss told me about the castle tour. Then I found out it's the mansion of some European guy from the colonial era, and it's got a history of Native American persecution to boot. You can't open this kind of place to the public. You wouldn't get a tourist trap, you'd get a lawsuit. The tribes that got persecuted here are still around. What was that Brendan guy even thinking? Guess we'll never know now. If you were suspicious, then why did you come? Because Helena wanted to. But had I known it was this bad, no way. I wouldn't want her to learn this kind of bloody history. With a month off, I could have taken her anywhere. But I chose here. And then this happens. So, it was for Helena. You never seemed to pay her much mind, so I thought you didn't even like her, honestly. I wanted to pay her more attention, but I couldn't. My subordinate kept calling so much, I couldn't catch a break. Detectives have it rough. They're still cool, though. I'm on vacation, so I'm just a plain old guy right now. Come on, let's go. You're more heartless than I thought, David. Is he behind there? Don't mind him. Let's go. Your mother's crying down in hell, you know. Can't you hear your mother's pitiful wails? Why did my dear Davy leave me alone? I don't want to be alone. Please don't leave me alone. Davy, oh Davy. <laughs> Calm down. Don't listen to him. David, doesn't it hurt leaving your mother all by herself? A real thoughtful son. He'd go to be by her side right away. Or do you feel relieved? To hell with that weak woman who always clung to you. Let go. I won't let him. Talk like that! Settle down. Don't open that door. Let go! You stupid brat! You don't listen to a word, do you? Never listens, never learns. Was to put your old man through a lot of trouble. What's that? I said your father must have had it real hard with you. Jumping into danger alone, following when I tell you to stay. That's not being a brat, I don't know what is. Say that one more time. So it's not just your eyes that are busted, but your ears too? Or is it your head to blame, getting riled up over every little thing? Think punching me will calm you down, then go ahead. Let's go.
Hey there, David. What are you looking up at? Look down below. Damn. Ah, I finally got you snared. That detective was a bit too perceptive earlier. Killing you would put me at a big advantage. A critical hit to the detective. Oh, this is getting good. Yes? Exactly. This may sting a bit, David, but not for long. Now hurry, Batman. Robin's gonna be a canary. Stand up, David. <coughs> Don't touch me. Keith. 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 Ah! You okay? It, yeah, I, I guess. But I think I got a bump on my head just now. Good. You go back to the room. If this happens again, I can't afford to save you. Sorry. It's my own stupidity to blame. That's not the problem. If anything happens to you, I'm the one left with a crying Shirley. Isn't there anyone who'd cry for you? Maybe not anymore. Huh? Still want to tag along? Yeah. Do what you like. I'm exhausted.
Keith, let's rest a little. If you don't take a break, you're going to... Shut up. This isn't the time. I'm tired, okay? Let me rest. Or are you going to drag around an exhausted citizen, detective? Lend me your lighter. You've got one smoke to rest. The heck is that guy anyway? How does he know about my mom? And Shirley's past? It's really disturbing. David, did you celebrate your birthday with Shirley last month? Or was it with Paul and Marion? Oh, I scheduled a meal with Shirley, then celebrated with Paul and Marion the other day. Huh. Did I ever tell you my friends' names? Sorry about your mother. Brain tumors are like a landmine. One misstep means trouble. But I guess they don't teach you how to dodge landmines in flight school, huh? What? Oh, and you want to toughen your stomach for anchovies and liver. I mean, unless you want younger girls thinking that's cute or whatever. Hold on a second. What do you know about my mom, too? And my friends in school... I never told you any of that, right? Keep this between us. But working as a detective for 15 years, you get to know stuff. Like what someone's done in the past, just by looking at their faces. Maybe that big-headed freak is the same way. Y you're kidding, right? You think I'm kidding? You're a real sucker. Take care you don't get swindled someday. What's this about? What do you know all about me? You were taken to the police after the incident with your mother. Remember the detective who questioned you? I was pretty dazed at the time, so I don't really remember. But it wasn't you, was it? Eric Simpson, my subordinate. It was only an attempted crime, so he was the only one to handle you. And you know, he's got a real messy desk. He lets case files and the like pile up so high, they even topple over onto my desk. I saw some files on you among them. Your history, your family, that kind of info. And your mother's diagnosis. Oh, and the ones who verified your identity were your friends Paul and Mary and Martin. I remember them well, especially because that Paul guy made a huge ruckus at the station. He was the one that ate too many chili dogs too, right? Then the anchovies. Oh yeah, I mentioned that at dinner. But I didn't tell you I hated liver, did I? I hate anchovies myself. And I hate liver. That's all. Why did you make a guess for that one? Because you're stupid enough that I thought it'd fool you. If you know so much about me, why didn't you say so when we first met? Because I was suspicious of you. Huh? Me? Why? A year and a half ago, you found a hang body in an abandoned house in another state. The state police came to us trying to determine the guy's identity. That's when I read your testimony, and it was real sketchy. Sketchy? Why? I understand you were looking for the guy who formerly lived in your apartment, but how did you track him down without even knowing his name, or what he looked like? You said you followed notes. But when you were asked to show him, you said you lost them. You said you shot a man in the house, but there was no gunpowder on the gun, no dropped cartridges, most importantly, nobody to shoot. And then you just happened to find that former tenant's corpse. You gotta know that's suspicious. But, but it's true. I was led there by the notes he wrote. Once I found the body and called the police, I realized they were gone. And I did shoot someone but I'm not sure if it was a person. As you testified, but I guess that doesn't matter so much now. I was wary of you because of what you could have done. I didn't want to leave Helena with a madman. If you did anything even a little weird, I was going to turn around and take my wife home. Do you still distrust me? When we first met on the boat, I intentionally told you that I was a detective. Somebody with something to hide would be alarmed. But then you just said, cool, so I was a bit less wary. You might be crazy for all I know, but you haven't shown any sign of being dangerous. 
Listen, everyone's got bad stuff in their past. For somebody who shouldn't know it to dig it up and use it against you, that agitate and anger most people. He knows that well. He's showing off what he knows to upset all of you and control your actions. He's done it to you, to Richard, to Lance. Lance too? He's an ex-journalist. Took photos of that job too. When he published articles, he signed his photos with LK. He investigated the state police during a sexual assault and murder case three years back, but went too far. The victim's family and civil liberties group attacked him for invasion of privacy, and he was driven out of journalism. How do you know about all that, Keith? Doesn't matter. Well, I understand that those are the guy's methods, but how does he know all of our pasts in the first place? The boogeyman lives in your closet, right? So, he's always watching. Watching when you nearly killed your mother. Watching when you were snuggling with your wife in bed. Don't make threats like that. He's only human. The appearance, the weapon, the info, it's all just to scare us. You're taking it pretty well, though. It's all cheap tactics. It's not going to scare me. Yep, that's our detective. Nothing scares him, even though his wife might be in danger. Still calm. If I let myself be shaken, you'd all follow suit. I can't protect anyone if I get distracted. A detective doesn't just go fishing for corpses. I've got my lousy pride and my duty. I can't just watch while someone kills people with a grin on their face. Even if you're forsaking someone important to you? What are you trying to say? There's a big gap between your ideal and what you really want. It's contradictory. Isn't that painful for you? Hmm. <laughs> I wanted to be a pilot, but thinking about it now, I think I was just too stubborn to see anything else. So? You'll understand someday. Thinking of taking a nap here? Let's go. Keith, those things you said before, were you trying to make me angry? I don't intend on telling anyone your history, nor your family problems. Sorry if you're still pissed. No, it's fine. I guess I am kind of a brat. Keith. Hey, stop that, would you? Huh? Stop that thing. It's hurting my ears. What does? Your phone! I hate hearing phones ring. It's yours, right? Make it stop already! C calm down! Make it stop! Calm down, please! Where are you hearing a phone ringing? There's no phone ringing. In fact, I think I lost my cell phone earlier. So please, calm down.
I hate it. I hate the sounds of phones. Why? Because it always brings bad news. Excuse me. Bearing here? Yes, that's right. I'll be there. Mr. Bearing, sorry to have called you. Your wife said she couldn't look, but we need you to confirm. It's my son. Are you sure? He's wearing the clothes from this morning. My wife sewed his name on then. Todd Baring. Check behind the neck. You have my deepest condolences. Sign here. We'll send you a pamphlet for a mortician. Refer to it if you wish. Thank you. There's a nurse waiting outside. Tell them if you need any help. Now, please excuse me. Helen. It's me. Hey, Keith, you off loitering somewhere? You gotta hurry. The suspect's on the move. Head for Wellington Street. Got it? Don't go. Stay with me. I'm scared of phones ringing. I feel like someone's going to tell me about a death in a family again. Ever since then, I haven't been able to answer calls. Why'd your son die? Run over by a truck. Driver died instantly. I couldn't blame anyone. I still have idiotic thoughts. Like if I hadn't answered that call, maybe nothing would have even changed. If I'd had been with him... Maybe he'd still be alive and smiling. It's completely stupid. It changed nothing. What could I have done? Sorry for grabbing you. I was just confused. Let's go. Get back! Thank you. 
Let's surely. Richard. Sophie. No witnesses. Not a single one. I only just heard about it, so I don't know any details. We're talking with the police there, but they seem confused. Like hell I'm satisfied with confused. Do you know how many deaths we have here? Come on. I'm going to the scene myself. Get everything in order, Eric. Yes, sir. Hey, that? Where'd Mom go? I don't know. Did Mom die? I don't know. Are you lonely, Dad? Yeah. But I've got you here. We'll sleep here until Mom comes back. You okay with it dark? Need a nightlight? I'm fine, cause you're here, Dad. 